In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the problems of the Industrial Era. There were many to choose from. The United States Senate, as pictured here, was controlled essentially by the monopolists, who are the large bags of money standing behind the senators in the Senate chamber. This was the case because senators were chosen at the time by the legislatures of each state. The state legislatures were very corrupt, so it's not surprising then that senators in the United States Senate were corrupt as well, or able to be manipulated by the monopolists. Another example, as shown in this political cartoon, was the food industry, and we can add along with this the medicine industry. All right, it's clear from this cartoon that the meat inside of the can is anything but pure and fresh. And in fact, uh, a lot of foods were unfit for human consumption. And a lot of medicines that were created were really should not have been taken because they weren't medicines and were filled with poisons and other things. This political cartoon shows Boss Tweed in particular, who I'll give you some notes on in a minute, who controlled politically New York City, as indicated by the fact that he has the city in his pocket. As the words indicate here, the Tammany Hall was a political machine operated by William Tweed, who was a political boss. He was not elected directly. He was behind the scenes and was able to get his people elected into power in New York City by bribing immigrants to vote for his candidates. And this happened because... Boss Tweed and the political machine were able to provide the immigrants with services that government was not yet providing. Job search assistance, finding an apartment. So uh, if, the, uh, if they were burned out of an apartment building, his people were there quickly to give them blankets and have locations to go for other, uh, other apartments to rent. And... The political machine never asked for any money for these favors that they did for the immigrants, but just prior to election day, you better believe that the uh, political folks, the block captains on each block would go around and ask the immigrants to vote for the Tammany Hall candidates. And the result, once these candidates were in city government, uh, they did everything they could to plunder the city treasury. Uh, and enrich themselves, of course, at the expense of the taxpayers. So, how does this stuff all come out? How is the public made aware of all of these problems in the industrial era? And there are a number of other problems beyond the ones that we've just spoke that I've just spoken about here. The answer to that question is journalists. All right, Upton Sinclair on the right wrote a book that you see here called The Jungle, and if you take a minute to read the paragraph, it indicates how disgusting and filthy the meat pack the conditions were in the slaughterhouses, the meat packing plants in Chicago. He took time to go to work for, I believe it was six months, in Chicago, uh, in one of these plants, to write first-hand accounts of the filthy conditions there. Lincoln Steffens in this case, wrote a book, Shame of the Cities, talking about political corruption in St. Louis and Philadelphia in this book. Ida Tarbell went after Standard Oil Company and published a series of articles in McClure's magazine, uh, a portion of which you see here, uh, about all of the unfair business practices that Standard Oil used to drive their competition out of business so that they could become the uh, monopoly oil player, the single company uh, distributing oil. So as I was saying, muckrakers were journalists who exposed these bad business practices and corrupt government to the public. One more here. Jacob Reese, whose photo is in the bottom left here, was a photographer and turned his lens on the urban poor. So if I can make these photos a little bit larger here, 
this is the book which is still available called How the Other Half Lives, which was a book of photographs uh, and some words explaining the conditions of the urban poor, largely immigrant poor, and the conditions in which they lived. It stands to reason that as the public was made aware of these photos, the conditions of the meat that they were eating and the medicines that they were taking, corrupt governments, and so on, that they got angry. And the public was indeed very upset with what was happening. What this led to in the early 1900s, the very early 1900s, were people that ran for government promising to fix the problems and ills of the industrial era. These people taken together were known as progressives and they believed that it was industrialization and urbanization, the movement into the cities, that was creating troubling social and political problems and lack of government involvement and they encouraged the states and the federal government to enact reforms that would correct these problems. And a number of people ran at the federal level, the state level, and the local levels, promising to clean all of this up. And they did. The next set of lessons that you'll be looking at talk about the solutions that the progressives passed into law to deal with these and a number of other issues, problems of this era.